Hey guys, back with another segment of Spirit of Aviation Week content. I'm Kyle Ludwig from the EA staff. Today we have Christine on the show. You might know her on social media as the Plane Lady. Christine, welcome to the segment today. Hi, Kyle. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's jump right into it. You fly with your husband, Tyler. You've been to Oshkosh a few different times. Tell us how you guys got into aviation and a little bit of your aviation journey. Um, I flew gliders before and my husband has his instrument rating and we have a flying club out here that we're with that's really great. We knew about Air Venture for a while and had thought about going and finally in 2018 we just said, you know what, let's do it. We're just, we're going to book the plane with the club. We're going to go do that general aviation camping out there next to the plane. And it's been incredible. It's now like our favorite thing to go out there and spend the whole week camping at the plane. And, you know, unfortunately, we canceled Air Venture this year, and it really right. is a lot of our favorite week uh, of the year. It brings the summer together. But you had a special experience at Oshkosh 2018. You were looking to buy an airplane and, and decided to do something different. Tell us about that story. into perhaps getting our own plane or starting like a different flying club to perhaps get something that would go a little bit faster and had been looking around and looking at our different options but as I mentioned we went to Air Venture then in 2018 and that when uh, you had the one week wonder going on and we were just totally enthralled with that it was something that we'd seen on the schedule before getting there that we were already excited to go and check out and watching all of the volunteers there working on the plane and getting that RV-12 put together was really incredible. And we ended up spending so much time there every day just watching and asking questions. And it was really, really fun. And we started to find ourselves asking each other, like, we could do this, right? I mean, this this seems like it's okay. This seems like it's doable. And so we suddenly shifted gears and started looking at a couple other different builders and looking at the different manufacturers and the different kit planes and trying to decide, okay, if we do want to do this, what do we like? How much is it going to cost? Trying to start to get a better feel for just more of the details and the specifics. It was great to have the idea of, oh, we could do this, but now it's like, okay, no, let's let's be realistic and let's look at everything and figure it all out. And it started coming together and it seemed like a really great idea that worked out well for us because again, we still had the other planes to fly in the meantime with the flying club. So waiting a little bit, but then having our own plane that we got to customize and build ourselves for a fraction of the cost it suddenly seemed like a really great idea for us. So we ended up, we went home, we did more research and everything, trying to make sure that we were really happy with the decision we made. We landed on the RV-10 and just were so excited when we finally got the, the kit and just pulled the trigger and said, let's do this. So. so let's talk about that for a little bit. So you made a YouTube video on your great uh, YouTube channel, Plane Lady. Thank you, you made a, a video that talks about the decision to pick the RV-10 in a Reader's Digest version, if you will, not to spoil the YouTube channel's video. Tell us a little about that process. Sure. I think that one of the important things that we right away started talking about was actually getting in the planes. And so going and not just learning about the specs, I think a lot of it was also getting in. And it's a really great opportunity there at AirVenture because you have that luxury. You can go and check out all the different vendors and get into all of the different planes and really get to the feel for what you like, what you don't like, what can you change, what can't you change. And that was what really helped us out the most was getting a feel for comfort as well as the performance and then being able to make a decision with a combination of all of those things. So, you know, you decide on the RV-10, uh, you call vans up. How was that process? I know you did a couple practice kits as well. Tell us about how you really started the build of your RV-10. We, when we actually pulled the trigger to buy it, it was really, we'd been hemming and hawing for a while. And then we finally were like, you know what? we're just going to do this. We're going to go all out. We're going to do this. We're going to buy the kit. And then it was, okay, now we bought the kit. Now what do we do? <laughs> and starting to figure out what do we need to do in the garage? Okay. What kind of workspace do we need? What kind of tools do we need? And 
wanting to make sure that we were comfortable with all the different tools that we were now buying and knowing how to use them well. And so we did end up buying a couple of the different airfoil kits from Vans, which were really great to give you a chance to work with the different rivets and to work with a bunch of your different tools. So doing that helped us feel more comfortable with all of the new tools that we were using for the first time, which then made it so much nicer when we started actually building um, the vertical stabilizer. So it felt a lot more comfortable, like, okay, I, I, I get this now. I know what I'm doing. I know how to drill out a rivet if I make a mistake. So, so when did you buck that first rivet on the RV10 kit? June 15th. And we wrote a note in the build log that we had to drill out too. <laughs> so, so it took you less than a year after the time you saw the one week wonder being built uh, in Oshkosh to, to the day you, you bucked your first rivet. What was that like? Tell us about, you know, the first day of the build. Oh man. The first, the very, very, very first step is you have to make these long cuts in the spar caps. And that was really um, <laughs> intimidating, I think, at first, because the last thing you want to do is mess up <laughs> on your very first step, making this long cut. So, but once that was done, it's like, okay, we can do this, we can do this. And the excitement just grew, especially so much with the vertical stabilizer, since it's your first big component and watching it come together. And when you have it finished and it's like this big piece that you can hold there in your hands, it was a really great sense of accomplishment. And each part, as we keep completing them, it's it's so fun when you get to the end. It 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 is frustrating every now and then when you get stuck somewhere or you get confused or you make a mistake. But then when you have the part completed there in front of you, it's like, okay, everything just goes away. <laughs> you just remember how awesome it is to be sitting here holding this part of your plane. And that's part of the beauty of home building, right? You know, we all make mistakes with it and we learn from them. We call our friends. Uh, you mentioned to me before the call uh, that you've really made a lot of friends in the home built community and you've leaned on them for advice and for their experiences. Tell us about how you're leaning on the EA community to, to help you with your build. There have been so many really great people that we've met in a variety of ways who we communicate with online or over the phone or in person, starting with our, our EAA chapter out here and Joe Waltz, who's in charge, is our technical advisor. And so he's been really great to have him come out and look at some stuff. And right off the bat, he had some really great suggestions for us and some great little um, tools or tricks that he brought over a steel angle to help us buck the trailing edge for the rudder. Um, just really great there. And we've met a lot of other people here in the local area through that chapter that's been really nice where they have let us borrow or given us cradles to use. So we had a, a fuselage cradle that someone gave us and that we thought we were going to build our fuselage before we built the wings and we ended up switching and doing the wings. So we've now given that fuselage cradle to another friend so he can use it until we need it. And uh, somebody else gave us a wing cradle. We've been able to borrow tools and it's been really nice if you want to go and, and check out somebody else's build or have them come check yours out to have the people here. But beyond just the local people here in the chapter, people who we've met either online or back at AirVenture, I have a friend who's a fellow Aggie, whoop, who I met up there at one of the Women Venture events. And so she and I will, will text or call back and forth because her family is building it together. They're in a really similar spot in the build. So it works out really nicely where, hey, I think you said that you were working on this the other day. Um, did you run into this problem or did you read this the same way or what did you think about this part or what did you use to work on that? And then other friends, um, Rob, who has his own YouTube channel, uh, Chase Every Second, and he and Tyler and I have gotten on so great and have been texting and FaceTiming. So even though he doesn't even live here in Texas, if we run into a snag, he's already built an RV7 and now he's working on an RV10. And so we were able to FaceTime and go, hey, what do you think about what just happened here and how should we work on this? So to have the local people we can reach out to and then some of these other friends now who we can reach out to over the phone or texting. And then of course the huge online community with the, the Vans Air Force um, website and their forums and the different groups that are available on Facebook and other videos that we're able to go and watch and see how what other people experience and how they, they're able to accomplish something. 
it's endless. I mean, you can pick whichever way you want to to reach out there. And Vans has a really great um, tech support too that we've been able to call and get help if we get stuck as well. So it's it's just really nice to have so many different resources that even though this is our first build, you don't feel stuck. You feel like there's always somebody who you can reach out to if you end up with a problem or confused or not understanding. It's just really nice. So if you join the show late, uh, everybody, we're talking to Christine, the plain lady uh, from Instagram and YouTube, talking about her RV10 build. You know, we hit on a minute ago the trials and tribulations of hoe building. There are mistakes made. There are rivets that need drilled out two and three times, maybe four. Who knows? <laughs> Tell us about some of the trials and tribulations of, you know, your RV10 project. Oh, <laughs> man. I think one of the worst ones we had at the beginning was working on the rudder and using Pro Seal for the first time and feeling so panicked about you only had this short window to work on it and not wanting to mess that up and not wanting it to start drying before we were finished, merging the two skins together there. And ended up having a problem with one of the pop rivets that we were installing where the mandrel broke. And in the panic of worrying about not getting it done properly and not getting it done in time, not doing such a good job getting the rivet out. And that was one of the times we called Joe, our tech advisor, like, Joe, can, can you come look at this and tell us what we need to do? Um, other like little tight spots where maybe you get stuck somewhere. Um, I, there was one small area where in the instructions that had called for using a solid rivet, and we tried everything. We went on the EA website and looked at some of the different instructional videos that are available there to the members trying to find a way to make this rivet work and just couldn't do it. And I forget who we reached out to that time, but we called somebody. They're like, just just put a pop rivet in there and move on. And, and learning the stuff like that where learning kind of not to panic, learning not to... Um, to worry so much if you run into like a little snag and kind of how to just move forward with it and how to progress that's been a really big i think confidence booster learning about how to roll with the punches a little bit so conversely what has been your favorite part of the build is it learning all of these new processes is it truly finishing parts as you said before and, and <laughs> being able to reap the benefits of that what is your what's been your favorite part of this whole process oh man seeing all the different finished parts again every time you finish something it just feels so awesome <laughs> to see it's like here's another part of the plane and having the parts now are stored in our house which is really funny um but i think yeah some of this the confidence of as you you start doing this knowing wow look what i'm doing look at what we're accomplishing here and it, again, all the different people who we've met, we've made some great friends through this whole process, meeting with other people who are um, building an RV-10 or building another plane. It's It's been really, really nice to have that that community and other like-minded, you know, crazy people like you who are out there building their own plane as well. And working on it with Tyler, you know, being out there working on it together, it's been really, really nice at the end of the day when he comes home for both of us to go out there and to be working on it together and to have it be something that this is a accomplishment that both of us are doing to have this be, you know, our plane. And to when we go out flying it to know that we did this and to have spent all, all this time together working on it out in the garage instead of just you know, watching TV or doing whatever, it's it's been really, really nice to, to have that time to be out there together. We have a lot of time to talk or to just mess around and have music on or whatnot. So it's been it's been really fun. So the workshop kind of becomes home is what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> it's second <laughs> home, you, yes. <laughs> there, there you go. So the other day when we were preparing for this call, Christine, you, you brought up some of the decision making in this, you know, deciding to buy what, what airplane are you going to build? Uh, <laughs> what avionics are you going to install? What propeller? What, you know, what components are you going to use? Let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, how do you guys kind of what decision making process do you go through? Not as pilots, but as, you know, aircraft builders uh, <laughs> during this during this build process. It's a lot of research going out and talking to our friends looking at what we can find online, looking in the different forums from other people's experience, 
we were really, really bummed about Air Venture this year because for us, this was going to be a different kind of experience at Air Venture this year because now we were going to be looking at all the different vendors to try and help us decide all of the different components that we need beyond just the kit. And so to have lost that that opportunity to go in and have the luxury of having so much time to be able to spend with all the different vendors, being able to move from one to the next, being able to do like side by side comparisons, being able to touch everything. It's it's changed how kind of we're going to be moving forward. We're still working on everything and making our different decisions. Um, <laughs> but it it has changed everything a little bit. It was the right thing to do with the current situation, but it really did uh, bum us out <laughs> that we're we're still going to have to figure out a slightly different way to make all of our decisions about all of these components now that we don't get to go to Air Venture. <laughs> it, we're all bummed that we had to cancel the great event, but it's going to make Air Venture 21 that much greater, right? Exactly. And we're all looking forward to that next July. So you took a little bit of a different approach. You hit on it earlier. You thought you were going to build the fuselage next uh, after you completed your tail kit, and you ended up moving to the wings. What has surprised you the most during this build process? Has it been the decision-making and all these little things you have to figure out, or what's been the most surprising part of your build? Oh, man, the most surprising part. One of the funny things, honestly, you know you're building a plane, but then when you open the crates and you look at how big all the parts are and you're going, wow, yeah, that, that's pretty big. And you get the spars out when we start working on the wings and going, ooh, okay, you, you really start to, everything grows. Because you're starting, when you're doing the vertical stabilizer and then you're doing the rudder, it's like, yeah, it's big. And then you get to the horizontal stabilizer and then you get to the tail cone and everything just starts growing. <laughs> and it starts to really come into to, to your mind exactly how big everything is. So it's that's been a really fun part. Um, surprising too, man, I don't know, maybe just how quickly the confidence came as you start working on everything. And again, with all of our different resources, how it seemed, I think, and I, I mentioned this, I think in my year one video, the year one recap that looking back on it, we were so I think a little bit intimidated at the beginning about are we actually going to be able to pull this off and to actually build the plane and now a year later you look back and it's like ah, you were so silly that's the easy part now it's all the rest of this stuff you have to learn how to do putting together the engine and all the wiring and figuring out all the components that you're going to put in so i think maybe that where it's it's not as as stressful anymore as you might have thought it's it's just fun <laughs> so so for those of us that haven't followed your series, uh, maybe as intricately as others, uh, you have over <laughs> 1,500 subscribers on YouTube. So I know you just passed that mark, and it's very Yay. exciting. <laughs> what um, what are the next steps in the build process here? Wow. Um, we are working to finish up the wings. We've got the spars, the ribs, the rear spars, the top skin's done. The fuel tanks are mostly done. The... Uh, ailerons were in progress. The outward leading edges are in progress. So we're looking to wrap up the wings here maybe in the next month if we're lucky. And then after that, we have our fuselage kit coming and that I think we might get in the next two weeks or so. And so it's we like to get the kits before we finish the previous one. It's It's been nice to know that we have the parts there and so there's no delay with our build process. And then it's it's moving on. We, we're keeping everything in separate components for the most part right now to try and make sure we have the ability to keep everything here at the house to uh, avoid having to go and pay for a hanger right away because it's nice to have the luxury of being able to work here at home in the garage and just go outside and it's not a big deal versus once we put it into the hangar having to start thinking about okay now we've got to drive down there and you know are the dogs okay and now we have to drive another 30 minutes back and do dinner versus be able to just go in and out of the house so trying to to keep it where we can keep building here at home as long as possible <laughs> 
So a lot of folks have made great progress on their home building projects during COVID-19, uh, obviously, because a lot of us are at home. Has that been the case for you guys as well? And tell us a little bit about living with your project. As you said, we look at it as a beauty. Uh, others can look at it as a curse, right? Being uh, so engrossed in your in your home build project. I think it, it depends. Again, we're really lucky to have both of us working on this. So it isn't anything where there's any animosity. Well, we, we might argue sometimes throughout the build process that happens. You know, it's going to happen when you have two people working together, but it's our project. So it's not something where he's doing it and I'm annoyed or I'm doing it and he's annoyed. It's a it's helpful. I think that both of us are actively taking part in this and enjoying it and it's changed things in that I have a guest room that's completely occupied by airplane parts right now because we didn't want it to be sitting there in the garage and risk getting hurt or damaged. So it's all lying on one of the guest beds propped up against the wall. Everything's just spread out there and it's comical. I think it's really funny. I mean, I, I think I showed you a picture where we had the tail cone in front of the Christmas tree when we finished it. So Let's pull that it's... picture up again. That, that's such a great picture. Let's pull up. There it is. <laughs> and uh, I think that's such a special thing, right? It's almost, well, it is Christmas when you finish a major part of the airplane like that. Exactly. And and it was over the Christmas holiday that we were able to go and finish finish actually riveting it together. So it, it was like the joke. It's our Christmas gift to each other that we finished working on the tail cone together. And, and that's what really separates your guys' story uh, from others, right? You're truly building the airplane as a couple and that's so neat for others that might be thinking of building their own airplane and maybe like yourself they were looking at buying an airplane saw an inspirational build and said we can do this too what advice would you really have for those that might be on the fence about building their own kit or or even a scratch built airplane reach out i think that i i get people who contact me i'm not so, who say they're not so sure about it how much experience and skill that we have beforehand. I think perhaps there's a misconception that the people who are building the planes are all people who've just been working in shops their whole life and are know exactly what all the tools are and how to do all of this stuff. And I think perhaps that's some of the fear, at least from the experience I've had with the different people who've reached out. And I think that it's important to realize, no, you know, this is all stuff you can learn. There, There's new tools and there's going to be new processes that perhaps you didn't do in a wood shop or a metal shop before, but it's it's all stuff you can learn. And there's different courses that you can take. I know that y'all have uh, different classes that you can do there during Air Venture and I think also outside of it. There's great stuff with the different EAA chapters where with ours, all of the different people we've met have been so nice and we go to their, their houses to look at their planes and you get to see their workshop and they're really eager to show you different tools that they use or how did they set this up and, and to help. And so I think that's the biggest thing is you're, you're not going to be in this by yourself. You, you've got a really great community around who you can lean on. And everyone, I think the nicest thing is everyone really seems eager to help each other. It isn't one of these where I think you worry perhaps about being a burden the first like two times you call. And then you realize, no, everyone's excited because they're all there. They've been doing this. They, they've been where you are. And, and that's, that's part of the real fun of it is sharing. You're not just, we're not just sharing this experience with each other, but we're sharing this experience with all of our different friends now who we've made. And we all get excited for each other when you reach different benchmarks, uh, whether it's you're already done and you're getting your plane painted, um, whether it's you're finishing your wings, whether it's you just got the kit. So it's, it's really it's helpful. It's really nice. Don't be afraid of it. I think it's the big thing. Don't feel intimidated. There's a lot of resources out there. There's a lot of great places that you can go and people you can talk to, to learn how to do all of this stuff. It's not, it's not so ridiculously crazy that it's outside the realm of possibility. It's really doable. And again, you can see we're doing all of it in our little two car garage and it's, it's working out really well for us. So <laughs> Well, Christine, thank you so much for uh, being on the show today. We really appreciate it. Uh, Thanks Christine, for you can, no problem. You can check out Christine's content on social media, Plane Lady on Instagram and YouTube. Check out all of her great channels. And again, you know, why build planes <laughs> or why buy planes when you can build them? Christine, thanks for being on the show today. Thanks so much, Kyle. It was a real pleasure. I appreciate it. No problem. And for, uh, 
for more Spirit of Aviation Week content,